Good afternoon. Let me turn that off just in case that comes on. I'm taking a drive in a place that I went to a really long time ago. And uh, I don't know how long ago it was. And uh, uh, it's so beautiful out here. And I, uh, I thought I'd go check it out again. I don't know. It's like, I can't even remember how long ago it was. Decades, maybe. And it turns out like this is like right next to my house, like all this beautiful uh, forested area. And uh, I've just like saw like a couple cars. Like I'm driving like I'm driving through these roads going like 20 miles an hour, like um, or slower, just like looking around. So uh, this week I've been trying. Uh, I've been trying not to dwell on things. Uh, so this is a, uh, I don't know if, if you remember, my friend uh, Mike passed away, and uh, today, yesterday was his birthday, and uh, I, I had a dream about him where I like I saw him like like I was like just really devastated by his loss, and uh, I had this dream where like he showed up in my dream, and I just told him you know like how sad I was and how much I missed him and how much I would have wish I would have said things or uh, tried to help him out more or just whatever like I could have done and uh, he just kind of like like he looked sad and kind of smiled and he just shook his head it's like no man it's it's okay that's what life is you know everyone everyone has their own uh, path to follow and it's uh, a friend can make things easier but a friend friend typically isn't going to change your life. Your life is going to be what it's going to be. And uh, it's about how you, uh, it's about your choices. And so Mike, uh, Mike basically has said like, your choice now is to, uh, is to not be sad. You know, to be happy that, you know, we are friends and happy that, you know, we got to know each other. So this week, oh, what's he doing? Um, so this week I've just been trying not to dwell on sad things and, um, and it's worked out real well like I realize like not, not even sad things are, are things that like might anger me or upset me or things like that like basically I realize that like because of work I throughout a day there's going to be a lot a lot of upsetting things that take place and so I can't really ignore it, but I can, uh, I cannot dwell. Like if someone comes up and says just some awful, awful stuff, you're like, all right, well, you know, but now that's over. The awful, the awful things that that person said, uh, now exists in that five minutes that is quickly, I'm going to try to get out of this guy's way. This. Whoa. This and of course, uh, there was absolutely no chance that he wouldn't be actually pulling in right after me. That was the only thing that could have happened. <laughs> oh, goddamn simulation! Um, what else? Oh, shoot. oh, that's never mind. I already tested to see if that thermos leaked and it did not leak. I got a new thermos, uh, which I like a lot. Um, you know, another good thing that's been going on, just like, uh, like doing things, I, I mean, I always do things alone, right? Um, and I've said it to myself in the past, but I don't know if it like fully sunk in, is a lot of the things that I've done alone, um, are probably things I wouldn't recommend necessarily to others or that other people don't have the time, the equipment, the desire. Like there's all these like, all these factors. Um, and I realize that, like doing things by myself really allows me to kind of like like maybe like indulge myself like like on these drives like 
there as long or as short as I want. I stop as many times or not, uh, you know, based on what I want. And, uh, like, practicing that, uh, oh, mending fences. I was wondering what they were doing. Like, practicing that kind of, like, self-indulgence. I was almost going to call it selfishness, but see, it's not. Like, I, I see that a huge amount of people kind of make selfishness like a regular part of their day and part of me is kind of like like whoa like that you're sending pretty clear signals about that you know whatever's going on for you is more important than any anything else or anyone else yet part of me also kind of admires their selfishness community church might be fun it might be fun to drive out here and go to community church one day so, I mean, I think that there's a lot of things that we think of as negatives, but are only negatives because people take it too far. Like, being selfish or self-interested to make sure you get at least what you deserve um, is good. I have this book that I hate that I can't get rid of. Is The title is, uh, You Don't... You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate for. And so, uh, like, most people are not going to, most people are not going to think like, well, I'm, I want what I want, but I also want to make sure you get what's fair for you. Most people assume that, like, you will also make, get what you want. So if, like, you give up, you know, if you give up a little bit, they assume it's because you didn't want it or you weren't strong enough, or what, like, they're just like, they're not gonna worry about it. They're gonna get what they expected, and if you don't get what you deserve, they're gonna take that too. You know, you can't leave any meat on the bone. And, uh, you know, that kinda sucks, but like, it mostly sucks just because like you're around, the, the reason why is you're around people that aren't invested in you in any way. And that's like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of life. A lot of life is being around people that just, uh, you're around a lot of people that aren't invested in you for any reason. Like, someone was talking about, like, I can't believe that person did this or said that. And I'm like, did you recognize that person? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you might never see them the whole rest of your life. They're not part of your community. If you ever have an emergency or there's a fire in your neighborhood or there's a massive city event where everyone gathers to watch a parade, they're not going to be there. Um, so, for... You're, you're part of the faceless mass. They are part of the faceless mass. And anything they do to improve your life as they move on to their others, like if they wanted to take some time and do something nice for you, build a barn on your farm, I'm going to stop and help this guy build his barn. And then they move on that, that you are never in their life again. And so everything they did to help you build your barn better have been for their own desire to learn how to do it and practice on your stuff because like it's never going to benefit them in any other way other than the experience that they got from helping you uh, uh, sorry rugby it's so nice out here you know in my mind like so like like the Buddhist in me is like uh, and it's still true, like, you know, like, be nice to everybody, be, show some kindness. Like, a lot of simple, sincere kindness, um, like, low effort stuff. Like, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, like, I was walking down the street, and I saw someone that had a bike locked up to a bike rack, and the bike had fallen down. And I picked it up and just leaned it up real nice, and I, I hooked the pedal on the bike rack like you're supposed to do, so that it has, like, multiple points of uh, contact so it doesn't fall over. Oh, there's dolls. There's dolls in those trees. Um, dragons. What are those dragons? I recognize them. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're Pikachu friends. Um, but anyway, I set this guy's bike up, and this guy's like this, another guy was standing there. Is like, oh, you don't seem you don't seem angry that your bike got knocked down. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, no, I'm not angry. It's not my bike. He's like, that's not your bike, and you picked it up. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like why would you pick up someone else's bike? And I'm like, well, I know what it's like to come out of the store and see, like, someone's knocked your bike down, and now that guy's not going to, like... This is a cool silo. Just drove by a cool silo. Fire department here. I'm in Corbett. Corbett. 
Um, like, I know what it's like to experience that, and uh, now this guy is not going to experience that because I took a moment and helped him out. And he's not going to know it. He didn't know his bike was down, but like, he's not going to experience that negativity of like, what the fuck, someone knocked my bike down to get hit by a car? You know, like, that kind of thing. He's not going to feel that, he or she. Um, I mean, there's been a bunch of things like that where I just took like a, I took a half moment, did something just to make something better and uh, it really didn't cost me anything. And in many cases, in some cases, um, I wonder what that guy, that guy's been parked there for a while. I think it looked like there was a trail there. Um, in many cases, someone noticed and they could tell they not only noticed me do something good for someone else, but they could tell that like, I wasn't even aware that I was being observed. And they thought, I'm gonna do something nice for that guy. Um, and that's happened a couple of times in my life. Maybe someone thought I was being an angel and then I thought they're being an angel. Like, hey, I saw you do that. I wanna, I wanna pay for your food or I, I wanna like, you know, something. You know, they wanna, they wanna do something nice for me. I was uh, on Reddit chatting with a bunch of people about uh, maintaining a certain level of kindness, uh, even in situations that uh, seem to indicate otherwise. Like basically, like I was talking about traveling in, uh, like out of the out of in the middle of nowhere communities, and uh, sometimes people treat you a little hostile. They don't know who you are, and um, they're kind of afraid you're going to do something that's like a little bit different than the community does. And, uh, they might say some rude things to you, or you might not know certain things. Like, like for once, one time I sat at a table, and it was lunchtime, and the, the place was starting to fill up, but everyone knew everyone else, and everyone also had their places to sit. So I sat at a place where, uh, you know, Jake and his friends were going to come sit, and uh, I was told to move. And uh, I moved and uh, left a real big tip, uh, you know, sat down, quietly ate my food, you know, didn't cause any fuss. And uh, someone said like, well, why would you leave that person a big tip that they were rude to you? Like Jake could sit somewhere else. And uh, I'm like, actually I had, I've had another friend, cause another friend I used to spend a lot of time with used to criticize me for doing that all the time as well. Like, why didn't you stand up for yourself? Why didn't you, like, why didn't I cause a problem when that caused a problem? Cause here's the thing, I got my food and uh, it was good. And uh, I left a big tip because I want to show that your that your actions didn't bother me. I mean, they did, but I'm not gonna let your actions bother me. It's not that I'm above that kind of thing. Um, it's just that showing that I'm affected uh, benefits me in no way, and as a matter of fact, detracts. Kind of like when you're in a movie theater and someone's like. You know, they're, they're being a little fussy, they're talking, or they're getting out their cell phone and suddenly like, you got a light in your face. Like, you can say like, hey, buddy, fucking put your cell phone down, or you can say it politely. But they're gonna feel like you've pointed them out that they've done something wrong, and now they're going to want to have an effect on you. Like, you may, I made them feel that they had been wrong, and they want me to feel something negative too. So, or you could like, so typically what I would do in a situation like that is, uh, is leave and just, you know, go see that movie another time. I often mention to the manager, like, hey man, I'm not gonna see the whole movie. And a lot, and most times, I've, I don't, don't remember a single time actually, uh, they just refund your uh, movie ticket. And uh, and in some cases, give you an extra. Like, bring a friend. I'm like, all right. Oh, it's so beautiful right here. I can actually like, smell the leaves coming through uh, the fence in my car. So that, I mean, like, yes, yeah, so I have to balance, like, this could be over quickly. You know, that was a little unpleasantness. It could be over very quickly. I could say, oh, all right, I don't want to sit in Jake's chair. I'll sit over here then. Okay, I'll have uh, the bacon and eggs. Some coffee, please. And then, you know, the, the food comes, the coffee keeps coming. You, like, you create a fuss and stay, and the coffee might not come. You create a fuss and leave, and you're still hungry. And actually, the next place you show up, you're gonna be even hungrier. So that's like a negative, that's like a negative negative. And uh, so as opposed to like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna respond to the negative with a positive. I'm gonna cooperate, I'm gonna leave a good tip. So you get what you want, 
<laughs> the long story. You get what you want, but also you might make things better for the next stranger that came by. Because I left a big tip, you know, and I bet you, I bet you Jake doesn't tip that much. You know, and uh, I, the reason I bet that is um, from talking to servers uh, about, you know, the locals that are there all the time. You know, like in their mind, that that's, that's their restaurant that they go to uh, every day for lunch is kind of like a um, extension of their uh, their own kitchen. So and the, so the waitress is just like chalk it up to like, well, you know, like this is the these people are the meat and potatoes, the bare bones of what keeps this place uh, running. And then I'm the tipper. Uh, so pretty, so pretty. Yeah, mostly it's just mostly I, I I want things to go well, you know, and uh, some of that's selfish, uh, you know. I just don't want problems all the time. So many people are just so about their problems, and uh, I mean we all have them. Um, and it's not like you should try to keep them to yourself or be quiet or anything like that about it. Like, but you should be working on it and. Uh, really like what you should be talking about is the solutions like uh, I've been really depressed and uh, filled with grief and I am out here driving through the woods across this beautiful bridge to make things better and it is working it's absolutely working um, there's a whole lot of things I've been doing that I could just tell make things better and as things get a little bit better, I build up a little bit more stability and uh, more emotional strength and physical strength. Oh, I've lost a bunch. I've lost a bunch more weight, and uh, that allows me to uh, just be a little bit better at the next stage. You know, which might be driving out here and going staying at that one campground, or uh, might be driving out here and actually going to that community church uh, for the hoot and holler. So like this looks like river access. I don't see any no parking signs. But there's the river right down there, the Sandy River. It looks like you can just walk right on down there. See, so yeah, as it now I'm getting up through here, I see no parking signs. So back there it looked like there was a place to pull over. I can walk over there. Someone's dropped someone's dumped a boat right here. Look at that cute little boat. Uh, you know, one of the things I've like, one of the things I like about uh, like about cycling or hiking, and I like about this is like, you know, it's freezing cold. Um, I still have that feeling of like discovery and excitement of like, what's around here, and like, what if I stop down there and walk down there? Um, that I get when I'm cycling, cycling or hiking. It's like you get in your head and things are bothering you, and you get out of your environment you know my house or away from work and uh, you just go and go and go and go and go and eventually your mind gets so into the pattern of like look at all these color look at all these trees and oh look at the cliffs over there and like you don't have like your brain fills up with the with what's going on as opposed to like keep going over some of the things that have been taking place and you know Yeah, I think it's it's like, you know, it was important for me to grieve about Mike, and it was important for me to grieve about Akila, and I'm always going to be sad about both of them being uh, not being in my life anymore. This person just stopped in the middle of the road to look around. Props to them. I uh, I don't have that. That's the other thing too. Like I kind of just admire that uh, center of the universe uh, activities. Like, oh, look at that. Yeah, I'll just stop right here in the middle of the road and we'll look at that. No one's coming. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, all right, I think that's good enough. That's probably been a fair amount of talking.